Hi, it's Susie from Nail Career Education, and I've had a lot of viewers ask me about brushes. So today, it's all about the brushes. Let's get started. It's kind of daunting out there with all the choices of brushes. So today, we're gonna to talk about the brush you would choose for acrylic. So when I'm looking for an acrylic brush, I'm really, now I love the oval shape and I've been using the oval number eight for years. But I started with a square. And a square can be really effective when you're learning. I've learned with my students in the class, if I start them off with oval, it's a little harder. So I've learned to start them off with a square first. It's a little easier, I think, to relate to when you're talking to square. When you pick up a bead on your brush, and I do have a video on the right bead, the liquid to monomer ratio, which is really good to watch if you want some tips on that. But when you're picking that bead up and when you're laying it down, if you can see right there, you can see how the brush kind of fits right into the cuticle there. When you're first learning, that area of brush to help you learn is quite effective when you're first learning. That brush can cover a lot of ground when you're sort of patting and stroking the acrylic out to fit the nail of where you're trying to go. So for a learning brush, I really think this is really effective. But once you sort of get that under your belt, you want to move up to, I think, an oval shaped brush. The reason why these are so good, because when you get into doing your French and laying in product, see that lovely point at the tip? that nice oval shape that comes to a point. That is really important in a brush. You know, brushes are really personal. It's like a pair of shoes. So you really do wanna mold it and use it to you. You don't wanna share a brush. It's a very personal thing. I just like, ah, someone using my brush, I don't like that. So I'll only lend it to those I really, really trust that aren't gonna mess it up. And the reason why is you wanna keep the shape that it has. This is really important. One way you can really keep that shape is after you've been using it all day, when you're cleaning it, I dip it into the monomer. Whenever I use my brush, I'm always rolling it. And on my paper towel, when I roll it off into my paper towel, I'm constantly rolling it to keep that tip. Now, of course, if you're using the flat brush, you would be going flat like this to keep that shape. What you don't want to do with a brush, and I'll get an old brush to do it with because I don't want to mess up my good one. You don't want to do this. Sometimes you want to because there might be acrylic stuck in there, which I'll get to that. But doing it like this is just going to ruin the shape of your brush. Look at that. That's just nasty. You don't want that. So what we want to do is keep a nice, even though there's acrylic in the, stuck in there, we can work on that. I'll show you that next. Okay, so let's say you got acrylic stuck in your brush. That can be really frustrating when you're trying to work. Tip number one, to not get acrylic stuck in your brush is when you get your liquid to powder ratio and you release that ball on there, make sure that you clean that brush like this. Put a little bit of tiny pressure on it to get rid of it. If you're patting this back and forth and up and down and it's sticking to itself, there's too much acrylic in your brush. You don't want any in there. It's so much easier to work with a nice clean brush, even in between when you're doing it. So if you do get acrylic stuck in it, sometimes you can be working and do like a whole hand and you realize it's still in there and you can't get it out. Okay, so if it stays in there long enough and you do get it into the point where it's hardened, how do you get it out? Monomer ain't gonna save you. You need acetone. Acetone will dissolve, bloat the acrylic that it will come out of your brush. It can be a little hard on your brush. So soaking in acetone for too long and too often can ruin those nice brushes. But if you gotta get acrylic out, there's no other way you can get it out. I will get a little crazy sometime and kinda cut it out. It does change the shape and I'm buying a new brush within a few weeks, but that's one way to get the acrylic out. So you would soak this in acetone, and what I do is when I soak it in acetone, just make sure that the acetone doesn't get up into the nice fancy part of your brush, like the plastic part. Don't let it go past this metal part because the acetone will eat the plastic, and that's no fun to work with either. So you can soak it in acetone probably about three, four, five minutes, depending on how badly it's stuck in there, and it will get the rest of it out. And then you wanna take like a cuticle stick and then just scrape it out like that. You can do it with your nail, but it will ruin your nail, right? If I don't have a cuticle stick, this is what I do just to get her done. Always move the way with the brushes. You can get it out and it will save your brush. Now, depending on how much money you spent on the brush, I mean, that may be more important to you. Um, I buy brushes, I mean, these brushes here, they're around 24 to $40 and they're excellent brushes. This is a number eight, this is a number size 10. You can see the difference in the sizes of the bristles. 
I find a 10 a bit too big, but I find an eight, and it's all personal preference. Again, like a shoe, right? So just a quick little side note as far as sizes go. This is the tiny little brush I use for the detailer. I remember the acrylic roses that I did, the 3D ones? This is the size brush you want to use for that. It's much, much tinier. You can see the size of my finger to the brush, right? And you can even get them a little smaller than that. Okay. I bought a $200 brush once, and I didn't clean it out good enough. And I came to work to sit down and do a client, and I take it out, and I go to use it, and crunch. <laughs> didn't really clean it out good enough the night before. That was a $200 lesson. Now for cleaning your brush at the end of the day and in between clients, I clean it with monomer. So you literally put it in your monomer, make sure there's no acrylic in it at the end of doing your client and just before you leave for the night, you can roll it in your monomer. Monomer is very effective to leave it in your brush overnight. It's like a conditioner, right? And you can just leave it in there, roll it, keep your tip happy, keep rolling in your tip. But the best way to store it is to have a cap for it. But make sure that when you put your cap on, you're not going like this. This is annoying. <laughs> I've done this. That you just make sure all the hairs get inside, because if they don't, you go crunch and some hairs go on the outside. Oh man, that does not make you happy when you come down. And then you take a look in your brush the next morning and it's all over the place. You can't work with that. Keep an extra brush kicking around too in case you do do something like that. But do store it inside your lid. It does keep it softer and more supple. So when you're coming down to work, it's not like crunch, crunch. You got a nice, fresh, soft brush to work with. And all the bristles are happy and it's perfect. So also when you're storing your brush, something that's really important is you lay it flat, but never store it with the tip up. The reason being is because whatever monomer is in this ferrule here, if you put it up like this, the monomer is sitting there and it's old. It's, and when you come in the next morning and go to work, all that monomer is now old and yuck. You don't want it running back into your bristles because it'll contaminate the look of the product that you're gonna put on that's new. So you don't want old product in there at all. So store your brush like this. So if you have a cap for it, some don't always have a cap. You don't have to have a cap. Um, store it like that. But obviously, if you don't have a cap, I stick it in the lamp that I have at my salon, and I, there's a little spring on the side of the lamp, and I just put it in there, and it just hangs there ever so happy. It's just perfect. Then I always know where it is, and it never gets crunched, never gets lost, and then I just grab it, and I'm off working. Okay. For years, I was using these. These are really, um, they're very effective, great brushes, but they're very plain. And then I found this one. Look at the sparkles in there. That really got me going. I love that. And then this one I thought was really pretty, too. This, this pretty pink one, I love this one. And it's great because it does have a cap. It's cool. So you can see there's lots of selection of brushes and types and sizes that you can try. And that's really the best way to find out what is gonna work for you. It's just to get the different ones and try them. You might like a cat tongue shape. You might like the oval. You might like the square best. You might like trying different ones for different services. Also, you can use a different brush for glitter products, like you're, when you're doing an acrylic design, and then maybe keeping a brush clean that's just for the beds and stuff where you don't want any glitter. I've tried that, but it seems that I will mix it up all the time. <laughs> I hope that helps a little for when you're selecting the right brush for you before you start your next new set. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.